All right. Well, welcome everybody. Good to see all here who are here in person, and want to welcome everybody who's joining us online uh, as well. So, Donna's going to start out with prayer, and then I'm going to bring a message. Okay. Father, we do just thank you for the fact that we were able to gather, Lord God, and just. We thank you for what you're doing in this season and in this time. And Lord, as we pray so many times, we do just cry out for those inward eyes that we will have eyes to see and ears to hear in our spirit man, that our spirit mans will be alert today, that we will hear what you were saying to us, Lord. And we just thank you for the word of the Lord. We thank you for all that you have done, Lord God, these years and what you have planted within. And Lord, we thank you that you were in the process of raising up an army. Lord God, we want to see an Elijah army uh, come forth, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that you give us a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation, oh God, and that you will open up the eyes of our heart to truly glean and to truly hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And Lord, we thank you for the word that you have given Ken. And we just ask, Lord, that as he opens his mouth, Lord, that it would be like a trumpet that will be sounding. Oh, God, it will be that alarm. And Lord, that you would just really, really help uh, just let this word go forth in the spirit and power of Elijah, Lord God, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, Brian had asked me uh, to share today uh, to kind of go through a vision, really, the, the vision for our trip to Africa coming up uh, in February. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, and I've titled the message Partnering for a New Wine Skin in Africa. Um, but what I want to do, I want to challenge you this way. Um, we'll, we'll go through a lot of what we're going to be doing in Africa and uh, the objectives of that, that, of, of that conference or why we're doing it, uh, because it'll help us to, to pray, as, because it, this trip is not just for Brian, Michael, and myself, who are the three that are going. It's for our entire fellowship, and for those of you that are watching online, it's also for uh, those of you that I would call friends of Life School, who, who really have supported us over the years and, and are part of the Forerunner School, uh, that we want your partnership and intercession as well, because this is a very important, very critical, crucial uh, trip that we uh, believe. So that's one objective. That's probably uh, the, well, I, I started to say the primary objective, but not necessarily even primary. There's really another objective is that all of you who are here and all of you who are uh, listening, or at least most of you who are listening online, you have that same call uh, as a forerunner. Uh, you have that same call. Part of, being part of this fellowship, you have that call as a forerunner. Uh, and so what we'll be talking about in terms of what we're going to be doing in Africa will also really pertain to us individually here and to us corporately here as well. So let's look at it from those two perspectives. Perspectives, because I know when you're, uh, you know, I know back from our days in the Baptist church when the missionary came and talked about what all, showed the slides and all that. Is man, I tuned out, you know. So I'm like, okay, uh, okay, I'm not going to listen to all, all of this. And it's so easy to do that when I'm talking about something that we're going to be doing uh, in uh, on a trip or so. So, but I want you to really pay attention because it is uh, a, a call to intercession. Uh, and it's also the same truths that we're going to be talking about over there uh, are for uh, us as well as forerunners uh, here in this fellowship and those in connection with us. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Partnering for a new wineskin in Africa. Uh, let me just share a little bit about the details of the trip. We're, uh, Michael, Brian, and I are leaving on uh, Friday night, uh, February the 16th, uh, to fly into Nairobi, uh, through Paris to Nairobi. Uh, we'll then go to Nakuru, where we've been having our uh, meetings uh, for the last uh, 20 years or so. Uh, and we get there on Sunday afternoon, uh, start Monday morning, 
we'll, we'll be gathering 30 plus uh, regional mentors from uh, a number of, of, of nations. Uh, we, we have life school in 10 nations, but I, I, would, I think it's just eight of the nations will be able to be there. But about 30 regional leaders will be coming into Nakuru uh, and we'll start Monday morning and we will go through the following Sunday afternoon. Uh, and it's a fairly, not a fairly, it is a very intense schedule. Uh, we start, we'll start at nine o'clock every morning and we'll go to six at night uh, every day, except we'll break a little bit earlier on Saturday and then Sunday will be kind of a commissioning type of service. So uh, over that time period, we'll be uh, sharing, I think it's 22 messages. Uh, uh, and so, you know, probably a lot of you are thinking, man, I'm sure I'm sure glad I'm not going on that trip to listen to Michael, Brian, and I speak 22 different times. But, uh, uh, but uh, anyway, we're going to, I think it'll be good. We're going to have time to uh, teach. We're going to have time to uh, have discussions and hopefully, and I'll get more into this, hopefully really sink these things into these men and one woman, men and woman. Uh, so that they can run with this. Uh, so anyway, that's the, uh, the details of it. Really believe this, me this trip is, is really, really uh, important. Uh, you know, I had to, for my visa, I had to go back and figure out how many times we've been to Kenya. Uh, and this will be my 14th trip to Kenya. I was like, wow, I didn't realize it'd been that many times, but 14 times to Kenya. Brian's been there most of those times. And uh, Michael, this will be your second, third, third, I thought I think third time uh, uh, going. Uh, and so, but I really believe out of all those times, you, you know, probably say this every time, but I really do believe this. This is the most important trip that we'll be taking uh, uh, with, to, for, with the forerunner, with the, the mentors. We must really uh, equip them to run with this. I don't know exactly why. I don't know if it's because of things that are going to happen in the world and we'll not be able to go or to contact uh, them in the future. I don't know uh, because it's just an urgency. Uh, and we all sense that, that it's an urgency in the spirit. But this is, and I want you to really get, get this because this should uh, hopefully will motivate all of us to, to really war and pray and labor in prayer. Uh, this really is, uh, I believe, the most important trip out of the 14 or times we've been. This is the, the most important one, and we really, really need uh, your intercession and your prayer uh, for that. Now, some of the things that the Lord's been speaking to us about is that this is a plumb line uh, meeting. This is a plumb line time. And, you know, those that have been with us over the years, you know, there's several times in, a, in the house where God has dropped the plumb line and he said, okay, you know, you kind of got a little bit off balance. So you know what a plumb line is? It's to, to balance and to, to get something that's exactly straight vertically. You've gotten a little bit off balance here. I'm dropping the plumb line to bring you back into, uh, into balance or into divine order. And I, I believe the Lord is saying it's a plumb line. It's a time of refining. It's a refining moment where... <clears throat> where the Lord is going to be doing refining with these 30 plus uh, mentors so that they can take this burden and vision and prepare a bride in Africa. It's all about preparing a people, preparing a bride for the Lord in Africa. You know, I mean, the Lord has given, this is the assignment that we've been given, the primary assignment. I mean, it's here locally in this fellowship at, at Forerunner School with individuals around the world. But the bulk of the, of the people that we're touching uh, is in Africa. And the Lord has given us this assignment to prepare a bride in Africa. And it's a refining moment. Uh, a lot of what's going to have to happen is that these regional leaders are going to have to take ownership. They're going to have to take ownership in this call. It's gonna, they're going to have to burn with the passion that we burn with it. They're going to have to to have that heart and that burden to see their countries, their cities, their churches transformed uh, in, this, in this way. And so it's, a, it's a really a, an important meeting that we need to come away with 
where they, where they have that heart that they maybe that some of them have never had uh, before. Uh, so it's a really important uh, time. Uh, it's a trip for the whole church. I want, you to, I want you to begin to think that way. It's a trip for the whole church. It's not just the three of us who are going. It's not just the three of us who are going and the rest of you are maybe offering a prayer for the three of us. This is a, 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 a mission ministry assignment for our entire uh, fellowship. And so it's just as important, <coughs> just as, important as you do uh, the intercession you are called to do as for the three of us who are going. So it's an important uh, time. Now, I, I'm going to, I want to talk about the objectives of the conference, but I, first I want to just share just for a minute about the, the issue of a new wineskin and then about the issue uh, of, forerun, of being a forerunner. Uh, you know, if you have your Bible, uh, and it'll probably be up on the screen, you can turn to Luke, Luke chapter 5, verse 36. Luke chapter 5, verse 36. We've talked uh, recently and over the years a lot about uh, a new wineskin. I mean, let me just read in uh, this passage where Jesus talked about that uh, from Luke. It's in other uh, Gospels as well, but this one, I really like this one in Luke. Uh, And Jesus was telling them a parable. He says, no one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will both tear the new and, and the piece from the new will not match the old. In verse 37, And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled out, and the skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking the old wine, wishes for the new, for he says the old is good enough. Now, there's just several points I want to make here about the, the part, the application of the, um, the application of the piece of cloth patched on. What the Lord uh, is saying that there's a new, there's a new dimension, a new aspect, a, a new vision that many of these re- regional leaders must take, and they cannot just patch. Uh, what the, this new thing on to what they're doing. Uh, it's not going to work. Uh, so they're going to have to, they're gonna have to uh, create a whole new garment, a whole new wineskin. They can't just patch on, let's say, eternal purpose or a bride made ready. Still have the same structure in their church that they've, all, they've had for, uh, for decades, the same thing they've been doing, and just have a message here and there about the bride being made ready. That you, that it, you can't just patch this on. It has to permeate and change everything uh, that, will be, that will be taking place, everything that be, we'll be doing. This message and all the other aspects of it has to permeate. You can't patch it on. Uh, and then the new wine, uh, the new wine is, is Christ. He is, the, he is the wine. He is the glory. And he wants to be put uh, into the church into the wineskin of the church, into the wineskin of the believer. He wants to be put into that, those, uh, those wineskins. But you have to have a, a wineskin uh, that can hold what Christ wants to deposit into his church in these last days. Just like it says in John chapter 2, he saved the best, best wine for last. It says in... Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, that Jesus is going to present to himself a bride in all her glory who will, who will be a representation of Christ uh, in the earth. And so he's got to pour himself into the church in a much greater measure than what is uh, for the majority of the church in the church right now. But for that to take place, a new wineskin has to be created in the church. Uh, my assessment of this is that they are very, uh, this is it's cold out here, and I think it's maybe the 12-degree wind is blowing on my notes here. Um, um, I forgot what my line, of, what I was saying now. What, what was it? Wine skin. 
Yeah, the wine skin. Got to have the wine skin in the church. Thank you, Brian. Got to have the uh, the wine skin uh, in the church that will hold these things, the structure of the church. And now there's there are three three aspects of that. I think that I, I want to mention anyway. It's probably more than that. Uh, it's not just the message. That's part of it. Uh, and really, Brian kind of quick on this. So I'll give him credit for it. He, even though he normally doesn't give me credit when he steals my <laughs> revelation. <laughs> but it's sin, self, and the message. The wineskin has to, has to be changed in all three of those areas. Uh, you know, you, you can't... You, if, if all you're doing for pastors and for any of us, you know, we can confess the bridal identity and we can confess uh, that the bride needs to be made ready and we can teach it and we can know even all the scriptures for that. But it, it, if we know that and there's major areas of sin in our lives, uh, then the wineskin is not going to hold the glory of Christ coming in to the earth. It's got to, we got to deal with sin. And, you know, I mean, it, uh, all around the world, it just seems like God right now is, is purifying his vessel. He's, he's producing that wineskin, I believe. You know, there's a, he's dealing with sin in the camp. He's dealing with it at a, at a, uh, at a church-wide, ministry-wide level. He's dealing with sin in the camp. Uh, you know, maybe the, the predominant sin in the American church is probably different than the predominant sin in the African church. But, you know, we'll just take the, the African church for, for an example because we're going to be talking about that to them about that. You know, there's a lot of issues related to money in the African church. There's such poverty in Africa that the, a lot of the pastors are creating a, uh, a, a whole structure and a system uh, that will allow them to prosper rather than to prepare a bride. But we got the, we've got to see a transition uh, in that wineskin as it relates uh, as it relates to sin. And you can use you, you can you have your own understanding of what things that are going on in the American church as well. Different topics, so much maybe not so much uh, money in the American church is probably more. Uh, you know, immorality and issues along those lines in the American church. But the sin has to be dealt with uh, for this wineskin uh, to come forth. But then there's also self. There's also self. Uh, you know, being a uh, forerunner, uh, being one that's called to prepare a people to walk in a totally different Wine skin, totally different way than the majority of the church is walking. It's like you walking upstream when everybody else is walking downstream. It's a really a lonely, uh, a lonely walk at times. Uh, you know, when you're speaking a message that counter is counter to what a lot of the church is speaking. You know, I'm, I, I, I was thinking about this uh, toward the end of the worship uh, this morning. You know, this is, this is uh, Donna and I's 40th year of full-time ministry. We, back in, uh, in January of eight, 1984, uh, not 1984, <laughs> 1984, not that old. I'm old, but not that old. Uh, 1984. Uh, we started in ministry, and then we started the church uh, in 1991. And, you know, the more we went on with God to create a wineskin, and I'm not saying we're there, uh, you know, we're probably a long way from being there, but the more we, we followed God to create a wineskin that would facilitate a people being made ready, the smaller we got, the more people left, uh, you know, and, and it's hard. It's hard. So it comes back to self, you know, and, and these regional leaders are going to have to deal with that. And we, I mean, we individually have to deal with that as well. 
you know, self, for, for Christ to have a bride made ready, for Christ to have a bride made ready in our individual lives, there must be a laying down of the self-life. We have to lay down that self-life. And so that wineskin that we're talking about uh, in, includes sin, but it also includes self, to surrender to what he wants. Even going on this trip is a, is a surrender of self. Uh, you know, you've got to, you've got to fast, you've got to prepare. Each of us are having to prepare like eight messages. You've got to prepare your messages. You've got the, all sorts of opposition and warfare uh, have come forth. Uh, you know, there's a death to self that comes along with doing this, and it's the self, death to self that comes along with being uh, those who will build that wineskin for transformation of the church uh, in Africa. And then the third aspect of the wineskin uh, is the message. Uh, you, you know, you can't patch a, 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 a bridal message onto uh, a prosperity gospel church. So the message has to change. And that's one of the things we'll be talking about a lot with these regional leaders. You're going to have to, uh, we're, to the degree it is necessary, you're going to have to change the message. Your message has to communicate God's eternal purpose. It has to communicate a bride being made ready. It has to communicate the indwelling life of Christ. It has to exalt the person of Christ rather than man. It has to do all of these things uh, that is, a, for a lot of them, uh, and a lot of the people they'll be talking to, is a complete reversal of what uh, is going on uh, now in the church in Africa and really in the church in America uh, as well. So there's a, there's a radically different spiritual environment uh, that has to be uh, implemented uh, in the church. It's, 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 it's in the church around the world. It's not just in Africa, but we're talking primarily about our trip, so we'll emphasize Africa. But there's a radically different spiritual environment uh, that must be created, a wineskin that must be created so that the wine of God's glory, his presence, his person can be exalted uh, in the church in these last days. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, that's the wineskin. Now, I want to talk a little bit about four. I'm still kind of laying the foundation before we get into the four objectives for the trip, uh, I want to talk a little bit about forerunners to make sure we understand these things. Forerunners facilitate the building of the new wineskin. Uh, the wineskin has to be changed. Sin, self, message, spiritual environment has to be changed. Forerunners facilitate that. Forerunners take the lead in doing that. A forerunner is one who goes before the larger group, and brings them along uh, to do that. And so we, we have, are calling ourselves a forerunner ministry. We believe God has called us to be those who will go before uh, the, uh, the larger body of, of Christ, get the revelation from the Lord of the new wineskin that is needed, and speak that and bring that into uh, the larger body so that there, there can be transformation uh, in the larger body. And God uses forerunners. He has all through history. He's used forerunners for different things. But it, this one, this scripture, which is our kind of our main verse of scripture, is Luke 1, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Let me just read uh, that. And he, this is speaking of John the Baptist. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. It is he who will go as a forerunner before him, before Christ, in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So that's the goal of the end time forerunner. Go before the people, bring them to where they come back to the Christ, where Christ is the head of his church once again, comes back to Christ from disobedience to obedience to him, to Christ, and to make ready a people prepared for the second coming of Christ. To make ready a people 
who will stand in the pressures of the end times that are intensifying even, even now and to make people ready to stand before Christ at the judgment seat of Christ to become a people uh, made ready. So that's the, call, that's the forerunner call in a general sense. So there's a chart that uh, I'll get Quentin to put, uh, whoever's working up there, to, uh, to put that chart up there of the forerunner ministry. Uh, is it up there? Let me know when it's up there. Okay. Uh, just I want to just make sure we understand some of the terminology that we're using. Uh, we'll come back to Zacharias uh, here, here in a minute. But forerunners, vessel, messengers, friends of the bridegroom, those are, those are really different terms for talking, speaking of forerunners in a general sense. Uh, you know, we use the term forerunners a lot. Uh, a lot of people use vessel, uh, which is good. We use that some. Messengers, we use that in a generic sense. So that, that's the forerunner call. Um, this is what, oh, that's a, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, and then below that, you see four functions. You see the messenger, the master builder, Friends of the Bridegroom, and Forerunner Intercessors. Now, here's how the messengers and the master builders work together, all under this uh, uh, canopy of the Forerunner call. If you think of, if you think of uh, the Apostle Paul on his missionary journeys, this is a good way of explaining it. If you think of him, uh, Paul... Oh, okay, very good. All right. Thank you, Chris. Um, if you, if you think of Paul, when he went on his missionary journeys, he would go into a church. Well, he would first, he'd go in, it wasn't a church. He would go into a synagogue. He would go into a synagogue where the, where the Jewish people were, uh, were gathering, and he would speak the, the new wineskin message of Christ. Uh, he was saying to them, okay, the, oh, you're practicing the old, there's a new wineskin, Christ has been crucified. He's the Messiah. So they would, he would speak that, and, and he would, when he did that, he would be a messenger. He would announce it. He would invite them into a new way of living, of a new way of relating to God. He would invite them, and sometimes he would confront them, uh, you know, and sometimes he had to leave town in, in the dead of night to keep from getting... Uh, beat up. Sometimes he did get beat up, but that would be the messengerial function. But then there were some who said yes to this invitation, and what? And he he would spend years really uh, with them, changing their understanding of how to relate to God, and that's the master builder function. Uh, Paul was both a messenger and a master builder. Uh, and so that's the second aspect of it. Now, the friends of the bridegroom, uh, that would be basically functioning as a messenger and a master builder, but with the flavor of making a bride made ready, making a bride ready, a bridal identity to that. And then the fourth aspect of it would be the forerunner intercessors who would be those who pray for all of this to come forth. That would be the aspect. And so intercessors may not speak the message, uh, maybe only one to one-on-one -on -one or to small groups, not to a large group, but it's just as important, maybe even more important, the intercessory uh, message. And then um, at the bottom, the spirit and the power of Elijah. That is so important, and I'll talk about that in, in, a, in a minute. But the spirit and the power of Elijah is the empowerment that empowers the messenger to be the messenger, to empowers the master builder to be the master builder, and on and on. And then there's a Zacharias aspect to this call too. And this is where uh, I'll share again a little bit more about this in a minute as well. That's Zacharias birthed John, uh, he and Elizabeth birthed John uh, the Baptist. He birthed the forerunner. And so part of this movement, I, I, we believe, is that as it grows, you know, forerunners will have to birth more for forerunners. Uh, and so there's, a, there's an aspect of forerunners to birth other forerunners who would function in these 
areas like that. All right, so that is the general uh, Let's just go into next. Let's just go into the four objectives of the conference. Um, we'll come to those. What I was talking about so far has been primarily just a general understanding of, of how a new wine skin has to be produced and forerunners how they do that, how how they function in order to produce a new wine skin. Now I want to get into four specific objectives for our trip that we hope you'll pray for uh, that they will come about. And they, you know, again, these are issues that you need to, we all need to deal with in our own life as well, these four. So the first one uh, is to secure the vessel, to secure the vessel. Uh, I want to read a scripture verse, 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting with verse 12. 2 Timothy 1, verse 12, uh, chapter 1, verse 12. For this reason, I also suffer these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know whom I believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day to retain the standard of sound words which you have heard from me. This is Paul writing. Uh, in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us the treasure which has been entrusted to you. Now, I fully believe, not because of anything that we've done, but I fully believe that God has used, uh, used us and used uh, others, but he's used us to deposit a treasure uh, into the African church into these mentors. Um, uh, there's, there was no understanding of any of these things, that, to, very limited, before God began to speak through us these truths. I'm not, and I'm not trying to be prideful, but I, but I do really believe this is the truth. These, the message of the bride, the message of eternal purpose, the message of indwelling life, the message of, of, of all of these things is really important. Uh, they're a treasure. But what, what has to take place is that these men and women need, that are called as these forerunners in this conference, they need uh, to see them as a treasure, to guard their, their, their walk, to guard the, their message, to retain these words, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. They need to. We, so we have to secure uh, this message. They have to set their hearts based on this forerunner call. They can't patch it on. They can't just patch it on to what uh, what they are are currently doing. They ha It has to change everything about them. Sin, self, message. It has to change uh, all uh, of those things. And. There, there's an issue, I think, that I want to just share some of the history of life school that I think will impact what we'll say to them and where some of these leaders are. But they have to come into this new mind skin. That's where we are. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a plumb line moment that they're going to have to come in to this new wine skin. And I'm sharing this, for, again, remember that we're called to pray. And so I, I will give you revelation that you'll be called to pray for this. There's a plumb line moment. They're going to have to come into this new uh, wineskin. Uh, now, let me just go through a little bit of the history of life school. Uh, again, we're at one of those significant times. This will be the 20th year, uh, completion of 20 years of doing life school. We started it at the Cool Shade Hotel in Nakuru uh, in the year 2003. Uh, and so you know, this would be 20, 21 years, something like that. Uh, and so it's changed over the time. And, and I think what has happened is some of the leaders have bought in to one of the older wineskins uh, that we were teaching and, and expressing. 
and they're going to have to all come into the new wine skin. This is, uh, uh, and let me let me just ex explain what I mean there. We started the church in 1991, and when we started the church, we were actually a Baptist church at the beginning. But one of the things that we were trying to do was to transform. It's, all, it's always been about trans, church transformation. That's not changed. But in the very early years, we were trying to transform the church from a Baptist mentality, from a Baptist mentality to a more of a charismatic mentality. Uh, you know, to believe in the gifts of the Spirit, to believe in faith for healing, to believe in those kinds of things, not to abandon the, the word that we learned as Baptists, uh, but to add to it the gifts and, and some of the charismatic uh, expressions. Uh, and so out of that, you know, out of that came some of the life school classes like Hearing God's Voice. The, the, way, the reason we did Hearing God's Voice is because our experience in the Baptist church is that nobody, uh, nobody really knew how to hear God's voice, hardly, in the Baptist church. And so we developed a class to help people who were primarily Baptists that went to our church in, in their mindset but wanted to go on how to hear God's voice. And that became a life school class. Same with worship. You know, with worship, it was like sing a hymn, the first and third verses, and somebody would stand up here like this. I don't know what they, why they did that. I, nobody knew what they were doing, I don't think. And, and, and then they would have a read of scripture, then they would have another hymn. And, do, uh, and so the, the vision that we had was to create a, a worship environment where you had continuous worship. You maybe started out with a, with praise at the outer court, but you went to the Holy of Holies was the idea and the, the plan there. So we developed a life school class called Worshiping Church. I mean, that was the intent of it, to get a heart of worship, but also to transition there. And then the other thing that we were uh, uh, wanting to transition is that the, in the Baptist church, the whole idea of covenant and walking by covenant uh, and uh, you know believing for healing, believing for provision, believing for whatever, uh, very little of that understanding. So we, we developed the class Inheritance in Christ to, which was focused on uh, helping people understand the covenant relationship with the Lord to walk in, in that way. And all of those things, I mean, it was primarily developed for the local church, but we took that in uh, to life school. Um, and so that was kind of the vision in the early Days and then in '96, '97, we got that we uh, received the forerunner call and accepted that call, and that again began to bring a change into the the life school model. Uh, in the early 2000s, late 90s, we received the spirit and the power of Elijah, uh, and so that really changed. That really changed me when, uh, uh, and I've shared the story. I won't go into a lot of detail here. But when it, with the impartation of the spirit and power of Elijah, it gave me a heart for this call that I could never walk away from. No matter how hard it was, I knew that was my call. Uh, and these, uh, these mentors, they need that call as well. But that changed life school uh, as well. Uh, 2003, we took forerunner, the forerunner call to Africa for the first time. 2007, Brian and I went to uh, five nations in four weeks, uh, totally exhausted doing pastor's conferences, and we realized we're never going to multiply this ministry if we do it on conferences. We're going to have to create a, a system. So the whole thing changed to a distance learning system. Um, and with that, uh, so 2010, uh, we created the, we implemented the distance learning approach to life school. Uh, and I hope you're not getting too bored on this, but I want to go through it anyway. But that's when diplomas came up. Uh, when we entered, we started doing diplomas. And diplomas have been good, but they've also not been so good uh, uh, in, in that. Uh, so in 2009, we, in, we initiated the bride class. I'm going to go through this quickly. But 2015, we got an understanding of eternal purpose. 
2017, we got a clear understanding of uh, the forerunner call with messengers and master builders and specific functions of that. 2015, we received the summons to the golden altar. 2019, we received the call to be a Zacharias and to birth John the Baptist. 2021, we began the forerunner school to raise up forerunners. Uh, and so here's the point I want to make. Um, some of these mentors have been with us for 20, uh, all from the very beginning. Moses, who's kind of coordinating this trip, he was the interpreter for us in 2003, the first time we went. His wife, Prisca, who will be leading some of the worship when we go over there, she sang prophetically uh, my message before I preached it, one of the first messages that I did there. And so, you know, some of these people have been with us from the very, very beginning. But here's what I feel like the Lord is saying there. And, and this is really, uh, I know it was tedious maybe for some of you for me to go through this detail, but this is the important thing of that that some of these mentors who have been with us for a long time have bought in to an older wineskin, an older wineskin of where we are. Uh, and it was where we all were, but some of them have not really gone on to a newer wineskin. Uh, you know, the, I mean, the, the number one favorite class of life school uh, in Africa is still hearing God's voice. That's all. They, they, that's the one they talk about all the time. Uh, I was so disappointed when very the the bride class didn't really catch on much over there. Whereas yet that's the ultimate goal of the eternal purpose is to prepare a bride for Christ. But they bought in. Some of them have bought into an older wine skin, and so here's here's the point. We've got to bring them in to the current wineskin and, and to secure them as this vessel who, who, where this is their heart. It's not about a Bible. I mean, the Lord spoke this really clearly. It's not about a Bible school. It's about preparing a bride. And it, I just burden that they'll say that. A lot of them will say that, but their heart is really on training, basic training of other pastors and villages, which is a good goal. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good goal, but we have to see the new wineskin come forth. It has to come forth. Uh, the new wineskin uh, must come forth, and we must secure them. And it's either going to be, the, the Lord said this, and I believe this will be the case, and I'm, I do have confidence in this, that it will come about correctly, but that they need to be purified or purged. We, we, we're, we have to go forward with people who really have this forerunner call to produce a wineskin that will prepare a bride. So there's a, uh, there's a major issue that has to take place there. Again, you're going to be praying for the, all this while we're Going. So I want you to get the understanding uh, of these things. Uh, okay, there's more I could say, but I won't say that. I'll go to the next page. The second objective, that was the first objective, secure the vessel, where they really have a, understand the current purpose of life school and our messengers, master builders who will pursue and implement that, that goal. The second objective of the conference, and I'll go through quicker these others quicker. Uh, the second objective of the conference is to equip the mentors in the foundational truths that forerunners need, in the foundational truths. Uh, because basic, because of technology, we've tried Zoom calls and we sent them uh, laptops and we got uh, buy laptops and put uh, data messages on them and all and that's helpful that's been helpful but there's still a need to get uh, everybody up to speed together in the foundational teachings of the forerunner message of the message that uh, we will be teaching you know I won't read this whole scripture but 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 
Uh, Paul talks about being a, a master build, wise master builder, and he said, I laid a foundation and another is building on it. So we've got to go and lay this foundation of what is the foundational message of the life school, of life school and of the forerunner ministry to prepare a bride. What is that foundational ministry? So they can build upon it. They can build upon it. Of course, they have to build upon it, uh, which is Christ. They, ha they have to build upon uh, that. Uh, so anyway, we're going to teach. Uh, there's six themes that we're going to be teaching on, and uh, we have a spreadsheet where we've got 22 messages under these six themes uh, that we'll be splitting up around the three of us. So we'll teach and then we'll have discussion on them and so that they can hopefully get these in their heart, at least to be able to go deeper in them on their own. Uh, the first one is understanding the forerunner call, which includes a teaching on the days in which we live and also about being empowered by the spirit and the power of Elijah. The second theme is God's eternal purpose. The third theme is understanding salvation and eternal rewards. That's so important if you're going to talk about a bride being made ready, of understanding the distinction between readiness and uh, salvation. Uh, the next one is the bride made ready. The next theme, the bride made ready. The, one, the fifth theme is the indwelling life of Christ. And the sixth theme is an, internal, the, an, etern, an eternal purpose church. Uh, and so we'll be teaching uh, a number of messages under each theme there for that. And that goal is to, uh, you know, assuming they want to be secure, they want to do this, is to give them the message uh, that they need to speak, uh, to give them so that they can uh, speak a message that really transforms. Now, the third objective, and I'm, I'm going quickly on this as well. The third objective is to empower them with the spirit uh, and the power of Elijah. Um, you know, I can only speak from, um, from my own perspective on the spirit and the power of Elijah. But the, the spirit and the power of Elijah, the impartation that came to me through, through Noel, uh, the Lord through Noel, back, I, can't, I don't remember exactly when, it was over, maybe over a couple of conferences really when they came. That really transformed me. That really, uh, that is what gave me the heart for this that I can't go back. Uh, you know, I, can't, I can't be content uh, any, in any other call in this. It gave, it's, it's given me the burden to see the church do that. There, you know, there, and there are, many, there are many aspects within God's eternal purpose. I mean, some are evangelists and some are, some are teachers, some basic foundational teachings, basic teachings. But for me, I, th this forerunner message, uh, I can't teach anything else. I can teach other topics, but it's all from this heart of making ready a people prepared for Christ, that he might have the reward of his suffering for a bride made ready. Uh, and the spirit and the power of Elijah is what that anointing of the Holy Spirit is what really changed me. And these leaders, these 30 or so leaders, they need, some of them have it already, some of them don't, even though they're good men and, and a woman, they're good people. But they, don't, they haven't had that impartation yet. And so we need to, to really be able, when we pray on that last Sunday, to impart that over them. Uh, we really need to, to, the ability to do that. Uh, again, it comes back to prayer. I mean, I know there's nothing in me to do it, nothing in Brian, nothing in Michael to do it. It's only, only God can do it. But he wants to use us as a vessel for that. But we want to see it really, we really want to see it make a difference in people's lives so that they can really run with this. So, so let's say that the travel gets cut off and we can't go again, that they can run with it and take it and run with it on their own. Uh, so that's the third objective. And so the fourth objective 
is also to release them in a new process to multiply this message throughout Africa, uh, to release them in a, uh, a new process to multiply this. Uh, there's a little triangle chart that we're still in the process of refining this and developing it, but I, I kind of jotted this together. It's not very well pro professionally produced here, but you look at the bottom of it, you got the CTP, the Church Transformation Project. Um, that's what we've been doing, and, and, and we're going to continue that. Um, and there'll be a, a larger number of people who they'll be able to, to take through that program. But there are others were pastors who come out of the of that church transformation project that they really want to transform their church. And so there's the Forerunner School, which is a secondary type of program that we're refining still, will take them deeper and so that they can really bring transformation into their church. Uh, and then out of that, there are others that could be would be forerunners. You know, the the, the second level these people aren't necessarily forerunners. I mean, they're a forerunner in terms of ministering to their church, but they're not a forerunner into, uh, uh, into other pastors and other leaders. But then there's a third uh, level as we go up the pyramid for those who are, who are transforming their church and they want to also be a voice to other people, uh, to, other, uh, uh, to, to others. And then, they're, well, I'm getting kind of confused. But anyway, the forerunners to forerunners are those out of that, again, a so smaller number who want to transform their own church, uh, but they also want to be a voice into other pastors to lead them to transform their church. And then hopefully out of all that, there'll be a bride made ready in Africa. Uh, it may only be a remnant, but uh, whatever number the Lord provides would, uh, would do that. So let me, let me bring this to a conclusion here. It's a very important time. Uh, it's a very important trip. We desperately need your support uh, as we go. We need your intercession. We need you to labor with us uh, on this because we want to see a, a radical transformation of the wineskin in African church and it starts with these forerunners, with them being transformed, secured as a vessel, uh, and understanding this message. Uh, it's, a it's a defining moment for life school in Africa. Uh, what we believe is that whether, at least from what we do, whether there's a bride made ready in Africa, at least from us, is dependent on this conference, really. It's a very serious time. Um, um, it's, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm over uh, stating it. I, I really feel it's so, so important uh, that, you know, it's, it's now or never. Uh, with, uh, with this group, for sure, and us there. Uh, and I'm hopeful. Um, I really do believe that, that, that uh, they will come around, that uh, all, most, if not all, will come around. They're good, they're good people. They have a heart for God. As far as we can tell, they're walking in integrity, and they're, uh, you know, they're really good people. But yet, they don't. A lot of them don't have the understanding of the of the new wineskin. They bought into life school under a present our and it was our understanding at that time because we've been on the journey, and so they've been bought in under at a new at a prime at a a level or a, a, an understanding that's not where we are now. But they we they have to go to where we are now, uh, and so. We covet your prayers on that, really, very much so. So, amen. Let me just pray, and then I'll just turn it over to Brian. Uh, Father, we do, uh, we are thankful for everyone here and online that are, that are watching uh, this. And, 
Lord, more than anything, we just ask that you would just stir each and every one of us with a fresh heart and understanding to be to labor with the team that is going in intercession. So we pray, Father, that you would just put that fire and burden in our hearts to intercede and partner with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So yeah, I want to share as well before we I want to share before we go offline here. Um, I appreciate that. that. That was very, very good, very, very helpful. So one of the reasons I wanted Dad to share this was to help us to understand, okay, we're going to be praying for this, and if you don't really know what we're going to do, it makes it harder to pray. So that, I, I really appreciated Dad giving that clarity and that vision and that detail to know exactly um, exactly what we're doing. I want to share one thing here just real quick. I've got a couple things to share. Um, I had a really, it was a really neat experience from the Lord on Friday talking to Matt from the UK. That's a hard name to remember, but uh, Matt from the UK. Um, by the way, I did not forget his name. If Some of you thought I forgot his name. Uh, there's a whole other story to that that I'll tell you later. But it, this is so interesting. We were talking about the Africa trip, and I was just about to speak this, what I'm about to share with you, I was just about to speak this to him, and he, um, I was about to say rudely interrupted me, but, you know, in the UK, they got great manners, so he kindly uh, jumped in front of me and said the very same thing I was about to share. It was really, really crazy, and this is what... Um, this is what he, he said that I was about to say, and I really believe it's what the Lord is saying to uh, this conference and also to us here at Restoration Life, is that the opportunity, this is a quote from Leonard Ravenhill, but the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. So I want to say that one more time. So, yeah, I mean, I've said that one time in my life before that. <laughs> and he, I was just, I literally just about to say it, and he spoke it right before me. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. If you think about this, this trip is, I don't know this to be for certain, but I'm pretty sure that there's not many or any works of the, of the Lord in the Eastern Africa with a, with a specific purpose, a forerunner purpose to prepare the bride for Jesus Christ in Africa. And this is a huge, I mean, you think about this, we've been in preparation for this for 20 plus years. There's not anything going on like this that, that we know of in Africa this really applies. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the, op the lifetime of the opportunity. It's very, very important that, that we understand the seriousness, the weight of this um, as, I'm saying this to us, as intercessors. We, this, I think what Dad said is so important is you're, this is a mission God's calling all of us to. And we've got to seize this moment for, for what God wants to accomplish to be accomplished. Um, and so, you know, we covet your prayers. We, this is, you know, what God wants to do cannot happen except by prayer. That's why we started praying this, this far in advance. I believe it's, it's far greater than we even have an idea of. You know, we, we started this in, in two, we started the distance learning program in 2010 and since then, we've, we've trained over 2,800 pastors in our program, and they have, they're supposed to be transforming their churches, and that, that equates to about 500,000 people. I mean, just, but I believe God wants to take it to a much deeper level. I, I believe what God's plans are, are far bigger than we can imagine. And I just want to just, so I'm saying this to rally us as prayer warriors for the importance of this, and, and a lot of the details Dad was sharing or, or to be prayer points for us to pray, Lord, do these things. Um, I'll share this story here. Um, 
is, you know, everyone knows, I think most people know about my eye. I had a hemorrhage in my eye back in uh, September where blood came to the back of my eye. It really messed up my, my vision and all that. I think all of you know that story and how I was, we were doing a, a Zoom call with our African leaders and right in the middle of that Zoom call, I started noticing like, okay, wow, my eye is clearing up. Um, and when the, when the phone call ended, my eye had substantially cleared up, and the next day it was almost gone. And uh, it was like the Lord was, was giving me, you know, I just felt like through that, that the Lord uh, gave that as a sign to me. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, that just doesn't happen. He just doesn't, I mean, it's one thing if your eye clears up, but it's one thing when, when you're on this call with your, these leaders and it clears up during that call, that at that time, and it was like the Lord was saying, you're going there to clear up their vision. You're going there to give them vision. And I'm saying this to encourage us as intercessors to pray along these lines. They've got to have vision of this to come out of the old wineskin into the new wineskin. And so Angie, why don't you come up? Angie's gonna share what the Lord laid on her heart on the way to church this morning. Yeah, I think we just need to be viewing ourselves as almost like soldiers right now. Just, um, you know, that we're about to enter into a battle. Um, we're already in a battle, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I know that many of us have been sensing the battle is going on already. Um, so if you just even want to say to yourself, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm yeah, a soldier. Just, we might have to preach to ourselves that we are soldiers. So view yourself in that way. Um, what if tonight I told you that the way that you brush your teeth is going to determine whether or not you're gonna fight in this battle. You would be like, what? That's, that's something trivial. Like, why would you judge me? Uh, or why would my qualifications be based on how I brush my teeth tonight? Um, I felt like the Lord was saying, challenging me, challenging us this morning on the way to church. With Gideon's army, it was something very trivial that they were judged upon. They were judged in how they drank water. You just can't get more basic than that. And it was like, oh my goodness. You know, it was like a real, like, like, whoa, I've never thought about that. Judged on the way you drink water. And there's a whole bunch of soldiers that will maybe meet one day in heaven that will be like, I wish I would have drank differently on that day. And I was like, oh, oh my goodness. So I just felt a real challenge from the Lord um, in our trivial things, for my trivial things, that he wants me to up the ante. And the thing was with Gideon's army, it was the people that were drinking and they were watching while they were doing the trivial task. And that's what I felt like the Lord was saying. Over these next, you know, weeks, month ahead, that in our trivial things in life, we're still going to be, as we're been, you know, doing those, the, like they just bent down and were looking. They could look out while they were drinking their water. And I felt like that's how the Lord said he wants us to be postured in this time. Just, you know, when, for me, when I'm in the car, which I'm in the car, you know, a lot, taking Anna to school, um, he wants in that trivial task to just be watching, be praying while I'm doing the mundane, you know, laundry or dishes. Don't just view it as a trivial task, but really just be watching at that time. And so um, let's be marked as watching during our trivial moments in this season, not just in our times of coming together corporately, but just be very watchful. Um, in this season. So, and I just also feel like, you know, let's think about our trivial, our trivial moments add up. And I just think about like the 40 years, the fact that you're in this 40th year now, you know, it's in the trivial things, moment by moment by moment that the training's happening. And what if at the end of this, these 40 years, 
out of Africa, a vessel is secured. It's worth it. It is absolutely 100% worth it. So let's give our trivial moments to the Lord. Who knows, is a watchman knee going to come out of this? You know, is there someone that's going to be so strong in the Lord that can say, yes, I will be like a general for this end time movement? It's worth it. So just, um, you know, let's watch the way we drink our water. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Very good. Very good. Uh, Just the last thing I'm going to say is we needed to raise $20,000 for this trip. We've raised a little, about $12,000. We need to raise $8,000 more. So I just want to encourage you, if you haven't yet given to this trip, to to make a donation, just to ask the Lord what he would have you give and just to be obedient to what the Lord is saying. We we need to raise $8,000. Um, you can give online at give.lifeschoolinternational.org, give.lifeschoolinternational.org. And, you know, we need to raise $8,000. You're sowing into really good seed. Um, I, I, believe that, I believe we're going to see a, a, an incredible move of the Holy Spirit through this. And we, we definitely need that, that, that money just for all that it costs to gather together 30 leaders to one location and all that's involved there is $8,000 for that to come in. And so you want to write a check, you can write your checks out to Life School. And uh, we really appreciate the, uh, the giving and the sacrifice. And anyway, I just want to encourage you to seek the Lord about how, how you, the Lord would have you give. And that, like Angie was saying, like Dad was saying, I want to encourage all of us to get out of our comfort zone, okay? We're probably all in some measure of, of a comfort zone. I know I'm having to get out of my comfortable leather chair that I like to sit in, and I'm having to go you know, however many miles across the ocean to Africa is out of my comfort zone. And so God wants to get us out of our comfort zone to really see his mission fulfilled. So I want to encourage you to engage in prayer with us. I want to encourage you to give sacrificially to this mission as the Lord would lead. And so just want to just say, you know, get some skin in the game with us. Just want to encourage that, that we would be able to, to see that we're going, um, this is a, a mission, a corporate mission. It's not just three guys going. It's a corporate mission of what God wants to do. So amen. That's enough of my rant. God bless you. Thanks for listening. And we'll uh, end that here.